good. Okay, okay. so I want to start out. I'm getting like a little. Yeah. Oh, that volume probably. We'll try that. So I want to uh, start out by showing you Ribbon's website. And on here, I gave you one of the handouts we have, but I want to show you another um, where you can find more. So technical guides. And in here, I have these tech lines, I call them. And they have them on all different things. The one you have is about font restrictions. I also have ones on um, getting it right, right from the start, which I've showed before, but it never hurts to show it again. Um, if you talk to our job planning department, they look at every job that comes in. They tell me I can't show this enough. So <laughs> setting up your document for the right trim size. So what, you know, what are you gonna print, what size? So getting that right, bleed, is it saddle stitch or perfect bound? Um, talks about facing pages. This talks about, you know, what kind of bleed do you have? What kind of margins do you like to see? Um, how about if I three hole drill? You know, can you give me a template that has the three hole drills so I make sure none of my images or copy get drilled through? Um, so we, we have these templates for all the different sizes we print, all the common ones that we can send you. And talks about um, swatches. Sometimes we see um, PDFs come in with you know 16 spot colors and we know they're only printing four over four. When you delete spot colors that are not being used, it's normally not an issue. You can run into transparency issues where if a spot color is uh, underneath the drop shadow and you delete you know and change it to process. So anyway, there's, there's reasons why you don't want to submit it with unnecessary inks. Um, so I got all these different, looking at separations. When I turn off the black plate, if my type is black, does it go away? Or is it four color black? Um, if it's really small type, you do not want it four color black because we can't register it. And so these are just a lot of little tips we learned over the years. Fonts, are they missing? Can they not be embedded? My links panel. Um, I know Lori is kind of half joking when she said I'm missing a bunch of links and right now it's fine for demo, which it is. Um, but when, but we get people that are missing links and they send us their files. Yes, we can output them, but you're not going to like it because it's going to be low res. It's going to be a basically 72 DPI. So you're going to want to make sure all your links are not only updated, but none of them are modified or missing. If they're modified and we click update, sometimes things move or whatever. So. So I go through that, um, and then you can see like resolution and color space um, by changing the, your links panel has some options to see all that. So anyway, we have a, a variety of um, tech lines on our website that go through how do I make a PDF to kind of a quick review for a lot of us on making sure my document's set up correctly and kind of everything in between. So, okay. So I'm gonna go back to the finder and if I hold down my option key, as I choose um, go, and I hit go, and right in here, when I get my option, see how library pops up? If I don't hold down my option, it doesn't. So in there, I have a fonts folder. So these are all my fonts, you know, as a user I'm logged in, that I would see, and if I hold down my command key, and I'm not giving you the Windows equivalent like you did because there is no equivalent. Um, in this case, this is the Mac OS Finder, of course, running High Sierra. So if you go to Mojave, which came out on the 24th of uh, last month, which I haven't done yet. I used to do it, but not right before user groups. I learned my lesson. So, because uh, then the creative cloud, something might not work right. That happened last year. So, um, and then Adobe fixed it, but it was like a month after user groups. So I'm like, your timing could have been a little quicker. So I'm running High Sierra, which is until Mojave came out, the latest release. The reason I mention that is with Mojave, which is the latest free release of Mac OS, if you install it, your fonts will vary slightly. There's some more San Francisco fonts that Apple included in the latest release that weren't there before. So, so if I'm showing you stuff that doesn't look exactly like yours, you might be running a different OS. But this is the latest up until Mojave. So I click on the top and it tells me my path. So this is one of like, there's really five different locations where fonts could be on your hard drive. Three of them 
are where people are going to find them typically. Um, this one is in your personal library fonts folder. I don't use a font management program, so some people use Suitcase or Font Explorer or Font Book. I don't use fonts where I'm changing them in and out every single day. So I throw them into this folder, and then if that changes, and then I sync them through Typekit as well, which you're not going to see them here. Um, but I just throw fonts in here that I'm going to use. Every single app on the Mac will see fonts in here. So if I'm using Excel, Word, which I never use, um, InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, um, all those different programs are going to recognize fonts in here right away. You don't have to quit out of them except for Acrobat. Acrobat's the only program I know of where when you add or remove fonts, you have to quit and relaunch. If you don't, it won't recognize them. It reads the fonts when it launches. All the other Adobe apps that I know of will read fonts when they're open. So. Quick question, does that override if you have like a suitcase or something like that? Is that kind of like first You're foremost? gonna have font conflicts if you try to, so if you have a font in here, like Helvetica you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, if you have a font in here, or in your system folder, and then you open one through suitcase, you have a font conflict. And I can't tell you um, which one is gonna, you know, override the other. The I, I think the one in your system would, but I, I don't know that for a fact, so I'm gonna say I'm not sure. For us, the one that is in our font folder overrides the one that's in our suitcase. Okay. Just, I don't know if that's random or if that's and that might be the way, that, that's my um, understanding, but since I haven't tested it, but if you if, if that's what it, how it works, again, since I don't use suitcase, I, I can't tell you from experience. That's the um, what I ran into, but if Tammy's saying, Tammy works at the Ripon newspaper, so if you're saying. We have to have our fonts separate out of suitcase to work with our program that we use for our classifieds and our AdWorks and Flow programs. Okay. And so that's where they are. Whenever we use those same fonts out of suitcase, they kind of don't like us. Okay, so yeah, it's good to know. So font conflicts, you know, are uh, you know can be a real headache. You got to kind of track them down. So the fonts you're seeing here, you know, open type, true type, um, are typically the two formats. Um, D fonts, which are Apple, they're they're really uh, true type fonts. So um, another place you're going to see them if you go down a little bit in this list you see um, other folders. And in here, there's like a system folder. And in there, there's a fonts folder. So a lot of fonts in here are installed by the OS. And the, it used to be a long time ago, you could go in here and be a little aggressive and delete those fonts. You know, you select a bunch, you're like, I don't think these are needed. I surely don't use them. And you select them, it'd say, enter your uh, administrator password and then the fonts would be gone. No problems until you restart your computer and you get a flashing question mark uh, because in the past, Apple would let you delete fonts it required to show menus and other things. Now they have what they call protected fonts for the OS that if you delete them too aggressively, it reinstalls them. So if anybody's running a more recent OS, that's what happens. Um, but you got you know, there's a lot of fonts. I don't go in here and mess around too much because I found um, like iTunes and you know things that come with the Mac, uh, iPhoto, they may use fonts that I never use, but it doesn't mean the Mac OS doesn't use it. So you gotta be a little careful in this folder. Uh, unless it's not your computer. Then, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so then um, we have library. This is where it gets, I don't know why they did it like this, but look what I have in my library fonts folder. You know, so there's, Again, several places. So how do you know? It's like, I got all these fonts in here. How would I know where they are? So one little tip that I do is I go into InDesign and, did it just crash on me? Yes, it did. Because all of a sudden it disappeared. I haven't had InDesign crash in a long time. So let's get that back up. And we're, I'll show you how I, this is what I like to do, ignore, because I don't know. If they tell me they read every single report. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right, Karen? They say, every report we get, we read them all. Yeah. The guy, the engineer I talked to, he's 
credit for it. Like, yeah, we actually do. I know, that's what they... They have the things so we can search for, for certain stuff to see how many times it's happened. Put it, like, when it says add comments, put, like, some joke in there and see if they, like, get in. <laughs> that's a great idea. Like, yeah. okay. Um, so, so in InDesign, I'm going to go to my, just create a text frame and type um, fall, select it, and then pick one font. Let's say I pick a font that I'm not sure exactly where it is. So this one. And then I go to type, find font. And in here, I'm going to click on there and say reveal in finder. And then it tells me when I hold down my command key where it's pulling that font from. So that, that's when I start seeing fonts um, that I don't know where they're coming from. I'm like, I'm not sure if I'm still using that one. Where is it even if I want to get rid of it? So now I know where, where it is on my hard drive. So reveal in Finder. So if you get a chance to clean up some of your fonts, it really helps because fonts are loaded into RAM. Every, so you don't want like a big, huge list of hundreds or thousands of fonts if you're not using them because they, they do cause issues. Can you delete them out of that library? Yes. Okay. But what I do, take it one step further. So I create another folder. It's called removed from original location. And then in that folder, I put down a folder saying remove from library. And I throw all the fonts in there and I don't delete them right away off my hard drive. I wait a couple of weeks to make sure I didn't do something wrong. So I go into my removed from original location folder and then I have a couple folders in there. And if after a few weeks or a month, I'm having no font issues, then I can either throw them out or just save them for later use. But you can remove them out of there, yep. And some fonts, you won't be able to, but those are the system fonts that Apple requires. So there are some fonts that Adobe requires, but they're in an application support folder called protected fonts that you can't delete anyway. So you don't have to worry about that too much. And every time I say that, I gotta make one little asterisk. If you're not using a current version. So that wasn't always the case. So is anybody using like CS6? Okay. So if you, so when I say stuff like this, I gotta say, if you're on Creative Cloud, um, then what I'm saying would apply. If you're, somebody says, well, I'm using CS4 and I don't have that same font protection. It wasn't always there. And so just um, if you're using the current apps, you know, then you have that, so. Uh, okay, so so different font locations, and I just want to reference this to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. So now the next thing I want to talk about is embedding fonts. And uh, like I said, almost every font is gonna be embeddable. Very few will you be able to not embed. But there's one that we ran into, and I'll just leave it like that. It's called Casual Joe, and a customer of ours used this. And when I go under Find Font, and I click on this, and I say um, More Info, you'll see right down here, and I'll just zoom in so we can see this very clearly, cannot embed in a PDF. And they're not kidding, because we got the file in, the font was not embedded in the PDF, and it looked like um, times or something totally different than what it's supposed to. So, and of course they say, well, in their system it looks great. And I'm like, that's because you have the font open, so it would. But when you hand it off to anybody um, else who doesn't have that font, it's not gonna look good. So, not everybody's gonna you know, look at every single font and see this, but your pre-flight settings, especially the ones that we use at Ripon, that they will tell you. When you export this as a PDF, it comes up in the background task uh, and says font cannot be embedded. But if you don't have the background task opened, um, it won't come up till the very end and you might miss it. You could be like, I'm making a PDF and I moved on to something else or I went to get some coffee or that dialog box pops up and you might not see it. So. But do you guys know what I'm talking about? So if I say done and I go over window utilities and I go background task, if this is not up, background tasks happen where? In the background. 
So you're not gonna see a message until the very end. So I like to leave this open if I'm having any issues or think I might, because this told me this morning when I'm exporting SVG fonts that my PDF wasn't exporting. And so sometimes this will give you some good information why. And so if I export this now, this should be an error. And I'm gonna use, uh, I'll just use our ribbon settings here. I would say export. And now if I go back to InDesign, export, uh, see the air here? And it's telling me, but see how easy that was to miss? Because it opened up Acrobat real quick. And so, so that's one way to know, is look in that fine font, check the pre-flight, and then, but how would I know in Acrobat? So if I go to Acrobat and I go under File, Properties, and I click on Font, See where Helvetica is embedded? And that is um, there because it has like, you know, the date and time and the name of the file. So that's why you're like, well, you didn't use Helvetica. Well, that's why that's there. But the one above it, see where it says nothing after the font? It's not embedded, it's not an embedded subset. So I know that's a problem. There's also a built-in pre-flight in Acrobat where I can say, are there any embedded font issues? And if I click on that, it will tell me that there are. So there's a couple different ways to check. And because everybody raised their hand saying they use fonts, this is you know something you wanna be aware of. What's the difference between embedded subset and embedded? There's, there's a difference and you'll see both of them. Anybody have a guess? Somebody I know probably knows. Sure, it's, it's only um, embedding the, the specific characters that are used. That's the embedded subset. So if you, like if for a good example, let's say you use half the alphabet in your document, you know, A through M or something like that, and nowhere in there do you use, you know, N, O, P or any other letter, it only embeds the characters you use. Now, you might say, well, that's fine, unless I want somebody else to make edits to my PDF. And so then they're asking us to make a change, but that character is not available because it wasn't used anywhere. Um, so if you don't, so that's what the zero is. It embeds the entire alphabet, every single font in that, um, every single character in that font set. So if you put zero, which is our setting, you'll get every single font, whether it's used or not. And then uh, your PDF will be a little larger potentially, but at least you know if there's a character you didn't use, but you wanna use later because you find a typo. Uh, but if you're just gonna send it off, and I really recommend people fixing their own typos because what happens, um, you ask us to fix it in prep, and then we get a new page the next day because we found something else, and the typo we fixed the night before didn't make it into your new document because we fixed it on our end. Are you guys kind of following me? Mm -hmm. So I would always say, if possible, fix all those little errors on your end and resubmit a new PDF so that way your document is up to date. If we fix the PDF, your InDesign document won't be up to date. So, <clears throat> so anyway, that's how you can kind of find out if your font's embedded or not, is pre-flight or looking under uh, file properties font. And this is kind of annoying that my iPad keeps falling asleep. Okay, so we looked at embedded fonts. The next thing is that Typekit Marketplace. So how many people here have used fonts from Typekit? Quite a few, okay. They're relatively easy to use. Um, so if I type in a font like agenda and make this bigger, and then actually pick agenda from here, I should have it still loaded. Okay, this font, when I go under type, find font, um, I can tell it's a type kit font because it tells me down here, uh, but I can't tell that it's, um, now I wonder, let's see, open type. And now you know what? This one's coming from my library folder because I did download a, a font from another place. And the reason I did that, I'll go to Typekit in a minute, is to let you know, um, so I, I synced it through Typekit. And then I'm like, I wonder if there's other agenda fonts out there. And there are, that are not available through Typekit. And I found like a bunch of them. So why is that dangerous? Because they all look a little different and their kerning pairs are different, so they could be flow. 
So by using, by us, you know, saying, well, can't you guys just find agenda and use it? We want to make sure we're using the exact same agenda font you're using. So, uh, but it will tell you down here if it's from Typekit. And now that I see it came from my library folder, this is probably the one I found outside of Typekit downloaded to see um, if there's any differences in there were in the two fonts. If they looked exactly the same, I'd be like, well, why are we paying for it on Typekit when it looks the same? Because this one I downloaded for free, but they look, they look different. So anyway, I think one of the easiest ways to get the Typekit is you come up here and you say add fonts from Typekit. Or you can go to typekit.com or I can go to my Creative Cloud icon and click on assets and I can see all the fonts that I sync through Typekit and I can manage my fonts through Typekit here as well. And it'll tell me, okay, here's the fonts I synced. I can manage them, I can unsync them, I can sync new ones. I can find that one called Agenda that I'm talking about. And when I find it, I see something kind of unique, relatively new, called Marketplace. And what that means is I have a little shopping cart icon next to them. So it says you can download this font, sync it and use it, or I shouldn't say download. Um, you can sync this font and use it on your computer, but you can't package it and you have to purchase it. Once you purchase it, can you package it then? Or? No, it, you can't package type kit. Who asked the question? I, okay, I just didn't want I, I kind of stay away from type kit. Yeah, you can't package any type kit font, purchased or not. And so that's the disadvantage. The one advantage is I find, um, it's an easy one place to go to for all your fonts, you know, one source. But because you can't package them, um, you know, some, some people like yourself, you're not the only one who's the price says that where, well, if I can't package them, then I don't want to buy them. And Adobe, I talked to the Typekit team about this pretty extensively before they launched. And I said, um, people, if they can't package the fonts to go back to a job from like two years ago, how are they, going to be confident that font will still be available through Typekit and all that. And they said, well, if they don't have a Typekit account, which is part of Creative Cloud, then they can't open up their InDesign file to open up the file that's missing the font. And I'm like, true, but are you guaranteeing us that every font you have on there today will always be on there forever? And because uh, if it's not, and the only place you can get it is Typekit, then you can't, you know, then your document's no good. So I'm, I'm very much on board with, if I can't download it or package it, um, you know, then it's, then it's a problem. So anyway, so marketplace is, some people would argue is a really cool way to have one stop shopping for all your fonts, whether you sync them for free or you have to buy them. Um, you know, but again, if you sync them and you hand off a native InDesign file to somebody because you can't package them, it's going to be a problem. So, so that is marketplace. Neat idea. Um, but there is some shortcomings I feel in there. So, so if you make a PDF, it will embed it. You can, you can print a PDF, right. anybody can, but you just can't open up an end So the, right, so the, um, so if they submit a native file and they send us all their links and their document, but they, and they send us all the fonts that are not synced through Typekit, but they have fonts that are synced through Typekit, we can't open it and use it. I mean, we could open it, but but if they, they will be embedded in a PDF. So every single Typekit font will be embedded in a PDF. So. If you've got Typekit, would you be resyncing to the same font? But, only if it's purchased. But if it's purchased, then we would have to purchase it. And if they didn't purchase it, you could sync it. Yeah, if they didn't purchase it, then we do sync off Typekit. So there's only a disadvantage of purchasing it because you can't package it anyway. Right. right. And you can use it without purchasing it. Right. But some people find there's some fonts simply not available for, I mean, Adobe hasn't licensed every single font through Typekit for free. So some foundries are selling them through Typekit. And they say, our fonts are so special, you gotta pay for them additional. And other fonts, either Adobe created themselves or they have licensing agreements where you can sync them through Typekit for free. So if you can sync it for free, we can sync it for free. If you had to pay for it, we would have to pay for it, if that makes sense. I know it's a little confusing, David, but. So if you find the font from like, you go to the Foundry and you find me five from them, and then I, I download 
You can download it, package it. Yep. Yeah. Right. And and a lot of them do sell it. But I, I notice the prices aren't always exactly the same. No. So, but you can find some fonts um, available on Typekit and then find them somewhere else. Those should package and, um, you know, download to your computer. So, okay. So that's a little bit about Typekit and uh, managing fonts and syncing fonts. And you can either do it through InDesign, um, Illustrator, Photoshop, and if I go to my Creative Cloud again, account at the very top, and go to Assets, I can um, see what fonts I have synced and manage them and unsync them. I believe you can sync up to 100 fonts at a time. And so my account says 100. I, I don't know if there's different accounts that would have different amounts, but um, I probably wouldn't sync more than 100 fonts at a time anyway, most likely. But um, if I want to have more fonts than that, I just unsync a few and I can then sync more, if that makes sense. So, okay, now I want to turn to Illustrator, and these are called SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics Color Fonts. And I go to my Glyphs panel, and I pick one that I know is a color font, Apple Color Emoji, that was developed for, what do you think, initially? phones, right? People want to send messages with smiley faces and all sorts of silly stuff. And so you have all these different emojis in here. Somebody's not happy. Um, get rid of that. Okay. So all these different emojis you can use. You can create outlines with them and you can scale them up. They are, you know, fonts. Right now, Illustrator and Photoshop fully support these um, color SVG fonts. InDesign, I believe, will support it. And so, um, so that's you know going to be nice. So they become more popular. So where do you find them? Typekit has them. You can just search websites. Um, there's some really good websites out there. If you just search for SVG color fonts, you'll find a bunch. And I'll show you a few more. And I like the glyphs panel because then I can see what they look like. So if I go down to like, um, let's see. Color tube, and I can start typing. That's kind of a, you know, a different font. Another one is called Popsky, and that is okay. This one's in color, but the funny thing is, right now it's not. Let's just see. I have this. I've used this extensively. So this one is a color font. In fact, I demoed it last year at our user group. And um, so it's been around for a while. They started coming out with color fonts in the um, in early 2016. So they're not brand new, but programs are just starting to embrace them. Mac OS supports color fonts, Windows 10 supports color fonts, and pretty soon the entire Creative Suite will as well. And so they're kind of cool. This one, obviously there's some issue that's causing it to be black and white, and if I wasn't press for time, I'd try to troubleshoot and see what's going on. But there's um, lots of different color fonts. I just showed you a few. And the next thing I want to talk about is variable fonts. So how do I know if a font is variable or not? So when you look at the font, and let me go to my character panel. And in here, let me just zoom in so you can see this. So we're see variable fonts. Do you guys see that VAR? Okay, that's a variable font. We'll try it. There's some really weird names. So if it's variable, what does that mean? Let me just go down again. It means you get a little icon over here. Do you guys see that in my character panel? So over on the right, I click on that and I get another choice to change it. So you can change, I'm gonna call this tracking, basically, they call it width. Um, but that, I think we would refer to that as tracking. And then this is gonna be the face, whether it's bolder or really thin or something in between. And then you can make it, you say, hey, there's no italic version available. There is now. Um, and so this is kind of cool, but the 
thing I haven't figured out 100% yet is I'm almost positive, but I just haven't taken the time to figure it out. I go through all the work and I get this font to look perfect, in my opinion. You know, How do I make a character style or paragraph style to capture all those settings I just used? So I, I don't think it's possible at this point, um, and I haven't tried it, but I'm almost positive it's not. And so this would be good that you know for like headings and small type. I don't know if I'd necessarily do paragraph after paragraph of this yet, because if these settings um, become available in a future version, where you can actually go in and create a character or paragraph style and adjust them, so that everywhere you use it, it's applied, then it would make more sense. But it's very cool right now to have one font and have all these different weights to it and uh, tracking you know, because you're changing this word spacing. So variable fonts, if it's not a variable font, you will not see that little icon over here. So let me move this over. So if it's not a variable font, you won't see this. So if you pick something, you might, you know, it's not a variable font, you'll know right away because you won't even have the option. And if it is a variable font, they're all open type. So you'll see O with a VAR for variable. Uh, and you can search for those. I think there's some on Typekit, but there's definitely lots of fonts out there um, that are variable. Not, not as many as we probably like, but there's quite a few. <clears throat> and let me just make sure. Um, open type variable fonts. Okay. So... I like to look at websites and see what fonts they're using. And one I was looking at, I was like, I wonder what, I mean, there's so many sites out there, of course. But one I was looking at on Apple, I was like, I wonder what font they use. So I click on this font ninja. You guys see this up at the top of my screen? It's a little ninja guy, I guess. I don't know what that is. And I click on that, and then I hover over fonts, and it will tell me, what font that is and what's you know what size and I scroll down and I keep scrolling so sometimes it won't because why that might be a JPEG yep so it's not a font so then it, you know San Francisco Pro semi bold tells me the color tells me it's uh, 32 point with 36 point letting so Font Ninja, in my PDF that I showed you at the very beginning, where I said, here's kind of the agenda I'm gonna follow, I have a link to this in there. And I, every site I go to so far, uh, and ones I haven't even showed you yet, I have links to in there. And so that way you don't have to write them down or try to remember them. They all have links to every site I'm gonna show you. And so this is kind of a cool little one, it's free. Um, I know it's for Safari. I don't know if it's for any other browser. I don't believe it is. but Anybody find that useful? Okay, so it's kind of cool. Now once in a while, you're gonna run into a font that is not really a font. And let me show you a good example. So I was just kind of going through some tests and um, I found this Macy's logo and I'm like, well, that's an Illustrator file, which is probably now a JPEG. And so I can't hover over it and tell what font that is. So I'm like, I wonder if I do like a screenshot, Command Shift 4 and I come and capture this, something like that. And then I go to what the font, you guys ever hear that site? It's my fonts, but what the font. And then I come over here and I find that screenshot I just took and it goes through here and it will identify this font and tell me um, it should be a lowercase m because then it won't be right if it's not and okay so let me go back because I clicked on something it's a lowercase change text okay so then it will go through and this I probably need to crop it maybe just a little bit more, but I'm not gonna waste time. It found it, it was actually really good, um, finding that font. And I thought, 
you know, I don't use it that often, but if I can't find the font using Font Ninja, Typekit, I don't think does as good a job. They have the same technology in there where it says like upload a screenshot. I find what the font uh, does a much better job. So I tell people WTF, wow, that's fantastic. So. <laughs> Okay. That I have used to just hover over something with the camera. It's pretty cool. Yeah, very nice. So then I was thinking, um, user group, famous fonts. So I was searching. Um, I'm like, what is a Macy's official font? And this place is called Original Famous Fonts. And you can go in here and you can type in names of companies and it will tell you um, what their font is. And that will actually show you, like, here's the font. And so it's called um, FAM, FAM fonts. But again, um, I have all these bookmarked, so you don't have to write them down. But this one, FAM font, is easy. So then you can go in there and say, what's Macy's font? Let's see if I go type in here and do a search. And here it says Macy's. OK. So then it will kind of go through and tell you um, information about you know what the font is and all that. So, so that's kind of cool. Um, this is the Font Ninja I talked about. This is what the font. All these bookmarks again I I have. This one is Font Management and Mac OS. I think this guy does the best job out of every site I've seen. He'll tell you what fonts come with every version of Mac OS for years and years, and It'll tell you like here's all the required fonts and here's the new fonts that were just installed. One other little tip I'll swear, uh, share with you. If I have a brand new system, which is rare, you're gonna get a chance to have a brand new OS and nothing else on it. But if you did, before you install anything, go into your fonts folder and give it a label. You know, like blue or red or whatever in the finder. Then when you install Creative Cloud, I look at what's not labeled. And I'm like, oh, those are all the fonts that were just installed by the Creative Cloud because I haven't installed anything else yet. And so I did that when I first started, you know, when this computer was brand new, uh, before I installed anything on it, I labeled all the fonts I had that came with it. And then I looked at, after installing Creative Cloud, like Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign, what fonts were not labeled. So just, you know, sometimes you want to keep an idea like, man, I added so many fonts, which ones were added and which ones did I get with the Mac? And, Fonts can quickly get out of hand. I think we all know that. So Helvetica, yes, you're having that issue with Helvetica. So, okay. Um, Adobe did something very unusual this year, in my opinion. And they said, we're gonna start talking about InDesign CC 2019. We normally couldn't really talk too much about it um, because they wanna be the ones, so, you know, tell you for themselves but they created a blog post and this blog post is detailing um, if you go to InDesign secrets is one way to get to it they had an article yesterday and on there they're talking about Lori gave a really excellent job on um, images they have a feature called smart fit or something we can look at it here smart fit something like that it looks at your image and tries to determine what you think you know you would do if you're doing it yourself so if you got like an image with people in it and a lot of extra space it will focus on the people so it's a new fitting feature another one I think is really cool let's watch this your team can add comments highlight text or make edits like deleting, adding, and replacing text on the PDF document. Once you've gathered all the comments and edits, simply import the PDF back into InDesign to see all the markups. Now you can see all the feedback within InDesign, evaluate the feedback, and simply press accept to apply the changes to your document. It's that simple. With InDesign CC, implementing feedback from your team just got much easier. So, isn't that a really cool feature where I get a PDF now and change the volume down. 
So I get a PDF <laughs> now. It was like echoing in my ear. I get a PDF now, and I have to look in Acrobat. What comments did they make? And then go to my InDesign document, make sure I don't miss anything. So this one is, yeah, really cool. So on this post, they talk about, um, you know, other features coming. So this is one of them. But if you search through, there's a um, Content Aware Fit. That's the name of it. So this is a new one. So it takes your image and kind of goes through there and says, you know, what do I think? Here, let's just watch this. An intelligent new way of placing images. Content Aware Fit analyzes and learns from your image. It then scales and repositions so the best part of the image is displayed in the frame. Here's how the feature compares to the existing fitting options. When placing an image without a fitting option, significant parts of it remain hidden and requires manual adjustments. When using the Fit Content to Frame option, the image is stretched and distorted. And lastly, when the Fill Frame Proportionally option is used, the focal point, or the cabin in this scenario, is obscured behind the frame. When the Content Aware Fit option is applied, the image fits perfectly. Artificial intelligence recognizes the cabin as the focal point. Negative space is intentionally added to the final fitting to maintain the image composition. Now with Content Aware Fit, you have another powerful way to place images. There's a link. That's really bad. There's... I turn this down. Yeah, that one's cool. So um, there's a link in this PDF I made that has all these sites we went to, the Mac OS fonts, the InDesign sneak peeks, we'll call them, because this is what they usually do at Macs, or show you like sneak peeks for next year. But Adobe did a blog, and they're talking about features before they're released. So kind of cool. Get a little heads up. Everybody here, once they find out that everything's working, or maybe not the first day it's released, but soon after, since you're Creative Cloud members, you don't have to pay anything additional. Um, and so I think it's kind of cool. So they're working on you know a bunch of features, and you can become a member of the pre-release team, if you will. You don't get paid for it, but it's fun. Um, you send them an email and to get access, and then you can get early access to the program. You can give them feedback on what features you like to see. Because for years, I would say, I wish InDesign did this, and I would tell Lori and two other people, and it didn't change the program. So then I started telling the InDesign team and made some progress there. So. If you have some feedback you want to share, um, they do listen. And so, so you can be a member of the pre-release and design team. It's kind of cool. And we're getting down there because it's 11.33. We still want to do a minute to win it. I think we got time. Let me just make sure there's nothing else I wanted to cover. Yeah, I think that, I mean, that I went through kind of quickly. So if there's anything I covered. If you don't, I have two. Okay. So, um. We could do that. Or, <laughs> so if there's any other questions on anything I covered or things we didn't cover that you're hoping we did, um, we'll do a quick Q&A and then we'll switch off again. I did have one more fun question. Okay. Um, in regards to Word, we recently upgraded our Word and apparently a lot of our editorial team is having a hard time. Like if they click to change a font, it starts scrolling through all these like Asian and Hebrew and yeah. like all these international fonts and I'm just curious if anyone else has that problem, or would you know how to fix it? Or did we possibly download the wrong version? It's in the fonts and stuff. It's hard to, to say for sure. Yeah. 